violating the sanctity of your order. I give you my word, we will not harm them. <laughs> Lies! <laughs> Objection! Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another movie reaction and commentary. Today, we're going to be hopping into Dune. Um, I know we just watched Dune, but this time we're hopping into the newer Dune. Um, so I'm excited, especially after watching the previous one, the original one. I think there was just so many really cool uh, gems and just appreciation I was able to really give to that film. And just having it being directed by David Lynch is wild it's uh it's a whole really um interesting experience uh not only realizing that david lynch directed that one but also he did the screenplay and it's interesting i, I seem like a, you know some people have like beef with it i enjoyed it i don't know what else to tell you all okay um if I, I can see if you read the book and you were hoping for like an honest adaptation um why you would probably get a little upset but i didn't read the book so i don't feel that <laughs> i don't feel that um, so I'm going to hop into now the newer ones and sort of compare, uh, while also not comparing, uh, if that makes any sense, I'm going to kind of, uh, save my mind on certain things that I find to be interesting, whether they should have kept it or they shouldn't have kept it. Um, I can already tell you that there were some things in the original film that I really wish that they kept in whether if it was this film or even Dune 2, because if you guys don't know, there's a lot of things that happened in the original film, uh, the 1984 Dune, that is also within Dune 2. And it's really impressive that that film was able to somewhat put the newer film and the newest film and combine them. I, I mean, that's ambitious as hell. Um, I mean, already we're talking about and we're seeing these Dunes in theaters and we're you know we're, we're 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 blown away by them but imagine trying to put both of these movies into one film it's it's impossible it's not doable um, so i really just have to commend the 1984 version for even attempting that and at the end of the day still giving me a good time i think that's awesome um but i'm really excited to jump into the newer ones and just see and compare the differences and the similarities and not just the story but within the story structure the storytelling the themes um you know what are certain things that are highlighted more often than the original one i can already tell that the characters are going to be the biggest the biggest difference um and not just paul but literally everyone um and that goes back and forth where i can already tell that the baron uh within the original film I feel like is on equal terms to the Baron in both of these films. Um, it's very, very fascinating, and I'm excited to kind of just like rewatch this and uh, whether again give proper appreciation and also just uh, find some things that uh, I personally would have liked to have stayed in there. Or maybe I'm like, yeah, I'm happy that they kind of took that out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm also going to highlight cinematography, sound design, all that good stuff. You know how this rolls, okay? You guys know how this rolls. So uh, as always, I appreciate the love and support that you guys give me if you want to be able to support this channel the best way to do it is by checking out the patreon you can also support by leaving a like comment and subscribing at the end of the day you don't have to do any of those things just sit back relax and get your popcorn and snacks as we hop into dune dreams are messages from the deep yeah that's what that thing sounded like sounded like something came from the deep again if you guys want to be able to watch and hear all that i say about this because i do have to edit this up for youtube uh, you can definitely do so by checking out the Patreon, syncing up your copy of the film with mine, and you should be good to go. Simple as that. At nightfall, the spice harvesters land. That looks crazy. <laughs> that looks absolutely insane. Looks like destiny. <laughs> I definitely would compare this adaptation similar to the Planet of the Apes adaptation. It's your full dress before the Emperor's Herald arrives. Full dress. Military? Ceremonial. Oh. Seeing this is so different from Kaladin in the original films. And that one, it almost seemed it was claustrophobic. It almost reminded me of like something from Alien. Give me the water. water. 
Yeah, another thing is that he learns, or at least showcases that he knows how to use the voice. It is of the Spacing Guild to find safe paths between the stars. Without spice, interstellar travel is impossible. Yeah, another thing that I really, really admire about this film is the sense of scale. The sense of scale in this film is incredible, and I honestly have to partake that because of the CGI. 1984, they didn't have CGI like this, man. <laughs> they still did a great job in giving off the sense of scale, but there's only so much you can do when you're trying to, like, showcase a ship the size of, like, an island landing, right? Man. Another thing that I really admire about this film is just the filmmaking. I'm so sorry if I'm bitch if I'm butchering his name. Denis Vill Villeneuve. Um, his filmmaking is exceptional. It's it's like oh my goodness, it's it's really really magnificent, and it reminds me of older films, with how the subtlety of something is really shown. If you notice, there's a lot of showing in this film rather than you know the original film. Not to say that there wasn't showing. They did a lot of showing in the 1984 version, but they also told a lot, too. Notice how we're not told a lot in this version of the film. And a lot of the subtleties, a lot of the conflicts are shown through good editings, uh, good edits on people's reactions that will build towards later on. I think it also gives this film a lot of uh, cool replayability, too. So you're going to Arrakis tomorrow with the advanced team? Yes, I'm going to Arrakis tomorrow with the advanced team. And I also got to say, too, after watching the original one, I have to give so much more appreciation to the characters like Duncan uh, that are kind of just within this film, but still give. They're, they're still given a lot of time to build with, especially with our main character here. We didn't really get that in a 1984 version. Look at this, Aaron Yeager, Sasuke Uchiha. <laughs> I need that coat. That coat is saucy. I mean, I need that entire outfit with the gloves, everything. This is actually one of my favorite scenes, is the conversation between father and son. I feel like this scene is so well done in both the original as well as in this film. Just brilliant filmmaking with the graveyard around them. Question. They'll travel in a few Prince and King, among other, I'm assuming, kings and princes. I found my own way to it. Maybe you'll find yours. Man, I love this scene. So good. Oh my goodness. Especially with the background that we're working with here. It's magnificent. It's a very underrated scene. I feel like in both films, but especially in this one, because there's a lot that happens in this film. But that's a really good one for me. It's me before I have. They're not human, they're brutal! You have to be ready. Yeah, that acting right there, that was really good. I love how that was set up for what's to come. I feel like this film does a really good job at showing just how brutal they are. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on how you feel they are in the second film. But I feel like in this film, they do a really good job at just show, showing and highlighting. These mochas are weird, man. <laughs> I love the Baron in this film. I love the acting that is is done with the Baron. It just feels so titanic and sinister. And you can just sense that there is not an ounce, I mean an ounce of empathy within his actions. His heart is strong as ever, my lady. I love that. I love this sense of communication. 
there's so many forms of it because information is such a powerful, powerful thing in this series. You know, you can have the weapons, you can have the voice, the sight, the training. But if you have information, which the Baron is very aware of, you can control a whole lot more than just people. I hold at your neck the gom java. Poison needle. Instant death. The test is simple. Remove your hand from the box. And you die. This test is so cool. It was cool in the original one. It's cool in this one. Now that I've watched the original one, I kind of know what he's feeling. And dear God. <laughs> dear God, dude. Mm. <laughs> I love that this is interpretive. You know, I love that we don't know what is happening to his hand. And it's interpreted. You have to kind of imagine it. And I feel like right there is the biggest difference between the original one and these ones. There's In this one, there's a whole lot of showing. In the original one, there's a lot of telling. And they both have its wins and its losses. Lungs taste the air of time, bone past fallen sand. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> Bars. I think it's so cool that the ships were were kind of like chanting as well. That's kind of cool. I love how in this design, the city, or at least the the place here w behind the walls, almost has this this Egyptian monumental size to it. Sorry, that's what they say. Candidates for a housekeeper, my lady. I'm not trying to tell House Atreides how to do their jobs, but. Coming from a, a water planet, I would just ship a lot of water over here. <laughs> At least enough to last me six months. These plants cling to life in a parched, nutrient-poor landscape. Crazy. I said this in the, the previous video, but this right here, man, that is scary, man. You guys wonder if that's already real? Do you feel like that's real? I could totally see it being real. <laughs> that's the scary part. This thing looks like it's really good at what it does. Violating the sanctity of your order. I give you my word. We will not harm them. <laughs> Lies! <laughs> Objection! He's like, now that that girl's out of here, we are going to kill them all. <laughs> My Arrakis. I do. <laughs> That's a great scene. I love that. My desert. My Arrakis. My dune. <laughs> Stilgar. Welcome. Sir, I respect the personal dignity of any man that respects mine. Stilgar is another character that gets so much depth put into him. I love it. It's really great. Brilliant actor, too. It's cool to see the No Country for Old Men back in here. <laughs> Are you from it? I am accepted in both siege and village. No. I think that is so cool. The little droplets that, again, are shown to us, you know, and not necessarily told. I think it builds up to this greater revelation uh, more effectively than I would say like, you know, in the original film. But again, that's just a comparison of showing and telling. You know, how you decide to use that is completely up to you. You know, sometimes it's good to tell. Sometimes it's good to show. It depends on what the direction is and how you plan on navigating around it. I feel like showing definitely helps with this because you're dealing with faith. You're dealing with a lot of uh, themes that 
are messiah-like. It's better to show than tell that, in my opinion. As, a, as someone who would like to believe, right? Especially with our main character who is trying to believe. Damn the spice! I want every man off that crawler now! Man, that is a sight, dude. <laughs> I watched both Dunes in uh, theaters, and watching this sight, the scale, the scale, it's fascinating. <laughs> that is crazy. That looks like. That looks like a Dragon Ball Z fight. It looks like someone just got slammed into a mountain. <laughs> and then you have Hans Zimmer's music, man. Good lord. I'm pretty sure if we have an if we had animals like that or just creatures like that, they would be a hundred percent just a, a religious following or just people that worship it i feel like that already happens right but just having something of that scale look at these daft punk weirdos man it's like, it's like if if daft punk was just heavy metal <laughs> it's kind of cool if anything happens will you protect our son with my life. I'm not asking his mother. I'm asking the Bene Gesserit. Mm. Yeah, these moments I, I just truly find to be such gems in the films. And they all come from Oscar Isaac's character. <laughs> his character is really great. Man, they were just completely left naked. Like... Man, do you know how scary that is? I'm sure we can kind of imagine it just from the wars that have happened in our human history, but dear goodness, I feel like this scene is just so incredible. The scary thing is that in this world, it's not even just the scale of how big things are it's also how small things are i mean we had the hunter seeker we have things like that i don't want to live in this that's insane that is insane when i see that i'm reminded of that one scene in one punch man with the giant shells like they're just giant boulders that are explosives and they're just penetrating the shield and just and then they finally break through. That's a wild look to it. I'm not gonna lie, I love the physical combat. I think the fact that we are watching advanced warfare in the skies while also seeing advanced warfare on the ground is pretty awesome. Holy crap, dude. Like, what do you do when you see something like that? I, I don't even know. Like, what do you do? <laughs> it's raining bombs, man. Give me the knife! Yeah. The mom is about it. <laughs> In this one. She is about it, man. She gets down. I love it. Trust me, I would too if I had a power like that. Dear God. That's crazy. That is a disrespectful move right there. I first saw that and it just, my God, right? I feel like as the Baron in the 1984 version was a complete psychopath, this one is a menace, man. This one's just a, it's evil in a whole different brutal, brutal form. And funny enough, I find this one a lot more frightening. So join her.
That's wild. I mean, I don't know how you not see that coming. I don't know why you would ever want to put your faith in someone that looks like him. <laughs> you don't even have to act like him. Just looks like him. That's like, man, he's only in this film. Well, I mean, he was in a good bit of this film, but he just an incredible role. My God. Like, you really feel it. Duncan's a G, man. Straight up G. Oh, my goodness. It's really great that this film gives these characters moments to shine, man. Look at this dude, Duncan, man. He said Arrakis runs on Duncan. <laughs> I mean, I think that's kind of crazy how you're a Freeman and you got snuck up like that, but... Also, don't they have those little, little gadgets that if they just touch it, they can just start... Floating upwards, I would use that. We must move with the flow of the process. We must join it. We must flow with it. I love how the sand is so similar to the to just the way water flows. And it's really cool because you you have this person who's I mean, this this is all just speculation, but just coming from a water planet, it's cool seeing how he's tapping into that. Uh, on a sand planet. Now the themes are quite similar. And the vermin. Kill them all. That's crazy. Just to say that and then just dip yourself right back into that goo is kind of wild. I specifically love that scene. I love that shot. <laughs> just just behind their shoulders in the cockpit of that. As they're slamming into just a, a wall of sand. And we hold on to that. That's pretty cool. No! 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 I, I love how like the, the drums are mimicking the footsteps because they're stepping on hard sand. I would not want that thing after me, man. You would see me going like all fours, picking it up like the ultimate speed. I love how this worm looks like a like a like a like an eye. Is, that, is it called an iris? Is that what it's called? You know, it's really wicked. I love how its mouth almost mimics that of like a like a wells, a well's mouth. And all the brushes and sensors. I'll be honest with you, ever since like Civil War, or not Civil War, Captain America and the Winter Soldier and the knife fights, I've been a big fan of them. <laughs> Arise. I love that. The sound design. Arise. Ah, so cool, man. <laughs> There's your power. This is only the beginning. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, they were not lying about them saying this is only the beginning. Go watch the second film. In theaters if you can. It's all, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> I think it's just worth the watch. Ooh. All right, everybody. And that is Dune. All right, everybody. We just got done Dune 2021. 
Uh, this film was awesome to rewatch. Like I said, I feel like this film, I mean, primarily any film, but more so with this film, the rewatchability on this skyrockets because this film focuses so much on showing and not telling. And that works to its benefits. It also can work to its negatives, right? I've seen people say that, you know, there needs to be more telling, like, oh, it took too much time and all this stuff. But I primarily like this difference in direction um, and just seeing how the subtleties, the important moments were really shown to us and was just not told. For example, like, you know, the, the, the arise, the ascension of our character, you know, obviously with the help of you know, the music with, uh, with, with, with the choreography, but more so just the direction, just the subtleties of these characters and their essential rise to uh, the occasion, to the power that they wield inside themselves is so much um, prevalent here. It's, it's, you, you can feel it. Whereas the other one, you know, the 1984 one, I didn't feel it as much, mainly because obviously, again, we're dealing with a film that had to take a lot and put into itself so bear that in mind when i'm talking about this right um but i feel like we were shown so much within this film and it almost reads itself like a novel it, it really does feel like i'm reading a novel and i'm you know looking at these words that are describing a character and there's these moments where you can feel the character break past a certain boundary instead of telling us and it's shown to us and and that literature that you read um is is really well translated in this adaptation of dune because of how it's shown it's a really great way of just highlighting why the medium of film is so incredible but at the same time it also highlights why the medium of novels and books are great medium as well too and how one can benefit where the other probably can't vice versa and it's very very cool to just see just a whole different direction in general a different style a more i don't want to say modern approach but yeah i mean we have better technology so of course the cgi is going to be much better um just a lot of these things that help aid the overall story um, not to say that they didn't face a lot of technical difficulties because obviously if you're on set when you're making a film you're always going to run into stuff like that uh, but how they did it i remember seeing like a little bit of the behind the scenes and how they blended um, uh, cgi with practical uh, effects and just seeing them being in the environments and shooting it it's really really cool it's very fascinating as well and i think they executed it in such a brilliant way and i i'm just i don't know i'm, I'm excited to just see um how this expands itself obviously i've seen dune 2 in theaters and i want to probably see it again myself uh once more but yeah definitely expands on a whole lot and i'm looking forward to hopefully hopefully more you know so i'm curious to hear your thoughts on this too what are some things that you noticed in the 1984 version compared to the 2021 version whether that's directing cinematography production design acting uh sound design all that good stuff what are some things you like about the 1984 version because i have seen a lot of you in the comment section saying that you prefer the 1984 version compared to the 2021 version um, but i've also seen some of you also saying that the 2021 version is more of your flavor than the 1984 version so please let me know i think this is a really good way to you know study uh, a, a genre that almost blends its way into a lot of other genres like for example again this was once a book and then having the uh luxury of seeing an adaptation that was in a 1984 and then seeing a newer adaptation in 2021 2024 i think that's very fascinating and i would love to hear your thoughts about it so uh let me know down below in the comment section i hope you guys enjoyed yourself I hope you guys enjoyed the video and had a good time as always stay healthy and stay hydrated because we just getting started purple jacket pocket full of weed everything that i should ever need grab some matches cause they give them free just
like my time Hair pulled back in the backseat 